Welcome to Freaky Fauna Friday, where every Friday we take a little time and explore some of the freaks of nature from around the planet we cherish so deeply. So please, jump aboard and let's explore the wilds together. Hello, and welcome back, my little cats and kitties, to Freaky Fauna Friday. And I do think Carol Baskins killed her husband. That's another episode. <laughs> <laughs> I am the great and peaceful mystery. I am Mr. E. You're Mr. E? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Welcome to week seven. I want that bell from SpongeBob. Day 95. You know, and crabs is going nuts. Uh, so this is another Emily pick. So this is the, the Lowland striped, or sorry, streaked. Ten rack. Yes. And it's ten rack. Uh, these look like Pokemon. I think This looks like cute. a hedgehog. Got a baby with a bumblebee, as Emily put it off air. Uh, they're, no, they're really cute. They're cool looking. They are, but it looks like a Pokemon. I mean, they really do. They're neat. Uh, I got some facts about them, and then we'll kind of talk about them. Uh, so, for one, just the shape and the color of these ten racks catches your eye. They are, their spines on their backs are very prominent. They are very hedgehog-like. I don't think they are hedgehog, but they're very hedgehog-like. But they're bright colored, black and yellow. Their quills, like porcupines, are brightly colored with yellow. Uh, their lifespan is also only 2.7 years old when in captivity, which is much shorter than compared to the re- relative of the highland streaked tamarack who live up to three years. Ten racks can also be eaten like domestic cows. In Madagascar, these are used as one of the exotic meats that they sell in the markets. When I look at this animal, <laughs> I don't think I'm like, that's what I'm going to eat. You know, they're, first off, they're brightly colored, which in nature normally means you don't mess with. Second off, they don't, I don't know, how, we'll have to look how big these things get. Uh, they don't look, they don't look huge. You should they look that look up. Like they look up how big they get. Meat. I mean, maybe it's the size of a dog. People eat dogs. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, It's only located in one place in the world, which is Madagascar. (laughs) These guys are awesome little things. They can actually communicate with their quills if they get separated from each other. Yeah, so these guys actually tap their quills together to make sound to attract each other. Yeah, I don't know how they eat them because they get like... Six inches to seven inches. I mean... And then weight-wise, they only get like 4.4 pound, or ounces. How many inches do you ounces. have? Five and a half to 6.8. Okay. And then 200 grams. And then 4.4 ounces to 9.9 ounces. Yeah. So uh, these small tenracks are found in Madagascar. They belong to the family Tenracidae in the order Afrocardiidae. And more specifically, the subfamily of spiny tenrax, Terusinian. The natural habitats are tropical lowland rainforests in the northern and eastern parts of Madagascar. <laughs> These guys look like Pokemon. Uh, but yeah, they're on that. So on uh, Cryptids of the Corn, we covered uh, manning trees of Madagascar. And we discussed that the whole east side of the continent, or the east side of the island, uh, is just rural. Uh, it's just there's nobody there. There's people that live in the jungles and stuff like that, but it's crazy isolated. But yeah, diet, nutrition, lowland, streaked, tem. I accidentally put my head oh. on the microphone. They're carnivores. Uh, they're venomous, or sorry, they're vermosius, which means worm eater animals. They primarily feed on earthworms and supplement their diet with various insects, anything they can catch. Mating, September to December. Pregnancy period is 63 days. They have 2 to 11 babies. Independent after 25 days. Litter is known about, or little is known about the reproductive system of the species. It is also known during the mating season, males compete with each other, engage in fights in order to attract the attention of receptive females. The lowland tamaracks mate in September and December in just eight periods, you know, like I talked about. Uh, females of the species reach reproductive maturity as early as 25 days old. You hear that? Mm-hmm. So they can start reproducing. In the same season they're born. No, 25 days after they're weaned. 
Yeah, they get it's just crazy to me. Reproducing the same right, season, season they were but, born. Yeah. Only being the uh being the only Tamraks that are able to breed during the same season which they're born. You're reading along with me. I just thought it was crazy. They are least concerned, which is nice to have on for Hefauna. Uh, what are some threats to their population, though? Along with many other animals in Madagascar, the ten racks are primarily threatened by the loss of their natural habitat as a result of continuous deforestation. In addition, this species is also being hunted for food. Uh, I guess it's like eating a guinea pig, right? I would think. Because I know, I mean, that's what guinea pigs are bred and raised for. It just, to me, it just doesn't look very much like anything. According to the IUCN, the lowland streak tamarack is very abundant and widespread throughout its range. But no overall population estimate is available. Currently, the species is classified as least concerned on the red list. Ecological niche. Feeding upon worms, although in streaked tamaracks, control populations of these invertebrates, thus playing an important role in the ecosystem habitats. So you ready for some fun facts? Yeah. <laughs> when spotted by a predator, these animals emit a crunch and putt-putt sound. <laughs> crunch and putt-putt. While their long hairs on their back become stiff, raising and pricking the prickling the uh, opponent, and then when the predator retreats, the tenorac takes its chances to quickly flee. And you guys should all look up a video of these guys running away. Their little feet move so fast; they're like Sonic the Hedgehog. New uh, newborn lowland tenoracs lack spines, and they start developing during the first day after birth. The streak tenorac is the only mammal species. Uh, Practicing, oh, okay, I'm going to try stridulation. This is when an animal rubs together parts of its body to give out a sound. This technique is more common in insects and snakes. For example, when baby tanaracs lose their mother, they rub their spines together, emitting a specific sound, which will help their young find their mother. So they rub their, it's like, a, you know, so crickets and grasshoppers, they rub their legs to actually make their sound. A lot of insects actually make their sound with wings. Yeah, like flies. and. Yeah, so it's just... That's the only animal to do that, it seems. They actually rub two parts of their body together to make a sound. Along with this, these animals communicate through tongue clicking to turn away intruders. It's also possible that they use echolocation, but this is, a, uh, this is only supposed, not proven yet. So as far as I know, they'd be one of the few land animals that don't fly that use echolocation, if any. I can't think of any that don't. Like, I know bats. I can't think of any of the other land-based animals that use echolocation. While some, uh, while someone, or sorry, when someone touches a lowland streaked tamarack, these animals can slightly bounce, thrusting their quills into intruders. So they just jump at you with their quills and hopefully it sticks you. Yellow quills on the lowland streaked tamarack's head form a crown. In order to turn away intruders, the animal raises its quills. When threatened, it fiercely attacks its opponent with its little head butts. This species is closely related to the Highland Street tamarack, inhabiting the central in, uh, upland parts of Madagascar. So yes, that's their cousin. Any questions about the striped tamarack? No. An odd little animal. Really pretty. Really pretty. So what's your words of wisdom for this week, young lady? Mm. Enjoy the nice weather. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because I'm going to assume it's nice out at this point. Yeah, I think this is the end of May, so. <laughs> so enjoy it while you can. Yeah, it's nice out. Because um, it's pretty much needed. Hopefully the apocalypse hasn't happened yet. Hopefully we've had these babies by then. The end of May, yeah. All right, yeah, well, good. Good updates. Yep. Thank you, Mrs. He. All right, guys. We'll catch you next week with more Freaky Fauna Friday. <gasps> Bye. Thank you for listening to Freaky Fauna Friday. If you want to help the podcast grow, remember to share and give it a five-star review.